Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by the man behind the desk, Dr. Normal. Hello, everybody. That was very dramatic, dear. I know. It's been a dramatic <laughs> evening for me. Our guests this evening are Josh Bancroft and Jerry McCarr. Did I get it right? Yeah. Close? Very good. Yay. Good. Who are here to talk to us a bit about Intel Software Network TV. Did I put them in the right order? You got that one right, too. You're two for two. Oh, boy. Okay. So just a little bit of background. You guys kind of do what we do here, but over there. So tell us a little bit about it. Sure. So uh, we're in the group Intel Software Network, mm -hmm. which is Intel's online developer community uh, for software developers, obviously. And we, it, it's a really cool group where we get to experiment and play with a lot of online social technologies. And I'm, I'm going to go through the entire evening without saying social media. So if I say you it, if I say it, it, kick me after that. But All right. that doesn't count. I'm um, but anyway, it's it's, you hear it's that at home, boys and girls. If he says those two words in conjunction, yes, I get to kick him. He gets and, and yes. Anyway, so <laughs> what was I saying? Okay, you weren't saying anything about social. I'm media. worried about being kicked. <laughs> you should be. So anyway, we have been. Uh, I I've been in the group for about three years, and the stuff that we do there is is experimental and cutting edge, and we we kind of try to play with this stuff as it comes out because our audience, the people that we work with. Um, both at Intel and outside of Intel, software developers tend to be the nerds and the geeks and the people mm -hmm. that are into this kind of stuff. So it makes sense. So Intel Software Network TV is a, a project that started as just kind of a crazy idea at the beginning of this year where I was looking at um, a, part of my job in the group is to look at what is the next big thing in, in online community and connecting with people online. And thanks in part to shows like Strange Love Live and the community that you guys build with people tuning in live to watch and chat and other people like Chris Perillo and Leo Laporte. Um, the story I tell when I'm kind of giving the background and the origin of Intel Software Network TV is um, when the Ustream iPhone viewer application came out in January, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Of course, I had to get it because I'm a huge iPhone nerd and I turned it on and it said, you know, this is what's live right now. And one of the things was Chris Perillo. And he does, you know, he used to be on tech TV and he does his online video stuff and goes on CNN all the time. And uh, I saw that he was live and he had 459 people watching him at nine o'clock on a Monday night, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, he must be doing a show, an unboxing or a software review or something that he's he's scheduled. I think I know what he was doing. Go ahead and what tell. was he doing? Was he sitting at his desk? He was sitting at his desk, yeah. surfing the web and yeah. <laughs> checking email. And there were 459 people watching him do that. Mm -hmm. And the chat room, he puts the chat room on the screen and the chat room is just rolling by and people are interacting with each other and they're talking and they're hanging out with Chris. It's just kind of like you would hang out, you know, with your friends at, at the coffee shop, you know, everyone checking their email or surfing the web or whatever, just mm -hmm. kind of hanging out. And that was kind of the, the moment that I, you know, when I'm looking back and telling the story where I thought it, it kind of gave me the same kind of feeling that Twitter did when I first heard about it. Um, I joined Twitter in 2006 before, you know, Oprah and everyone else. So, you know, that gives me street cred. Back in the day. Back in the day. I heard that album before any of you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. OK, I get it. Yeah. But um, but at, at this at that time with Twitter, it just felt like it was going to be something big. I mean, mm -hmm. I almost compulsively play with every new social network and every new toy on the Web that lets you interact with people and join and do things and um try them all out. And a lot of them, you know, frankly, don't differentiate themselves very much or don't have anything very special, mm -hmm. but occasionally something does. And it kind of makes me feel like, wow, this is going to be big. And, and I don't claim to have any, you know, psychic powers about the future of the internet, but I've been able to, to kind of ride the wave a few times. And so this online video based community that I was seeing, like with Chris Perillo and Leo Laporte with his twit army and mm -hmm. thousand people watch every time he does a show, um, felt like something big. So we looked at how we could do that for our community of software developers at Intel. Um, and we looked at doing some shows and it so happened that one of our coworkers, Aaron was doing a blog talk radio audio podcast on parallel programming topics and was getting some success with that. And so we said, well, what if we took that and made it video and made mm -hmm. it live? And so we had been, you know, we knew about 
you guys, and I think I'd been on the show by that point. You had been on the show by that I've, point. I'm a, I'm a veteran, so. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we thought, let's try this video-based community thing. We've got a couple of shows. We actually have three shows right now. Our goal is to have two more by the end of the year and uh, basically run it like an online TV network where it's interactive. People can come. They can chat. They can go and watch past shows. If you go there right now, um, intel.com slash software slash TV mm-hmm. and check. We're obviously not streaming anything live. But you'll see past episodes. It's kind of like a TV station. You turn it on and you expect something to be there. So it's different from um, from our video site, which is, oh, look at that. It's up on the Ooh. screen. Very oh, nice. Fancy pants. So that's Aaron Terstig right there. Well, and you, uh, yeah. I think that was I think that was this week's show. But you see, we've got, you know, the chat there where you can interact. But mm-hmm. we, we wanted to kind of, it, it, it relates to a lot of what Jerry does. Um, Jerry is our professional video guy and none of this would happen without him. And uh, he does a lot of videos for our site called take five, which is, it's kind of like our video library. It's kind of like a YouTube. You can go there and there are videos on a variety of topics that you can either watch by category or see what's new. And you go and you watch a video and you can do the YouTube kind of things with it. You can embed it. You can, you know, download it and take it with you and, and do those kind of things. But we wanted the Intel software network TV side of things to be to really focus on live and interactive and Mm -hmm. so that's what we do we also have looked at um we do event coverage so a few weeks ago we went to the siggraph conference which is the graphics big graphics conference uh it was in new orleans and we did some live shows from siggraph and Mm -hmm. we're looking at um I probably shouldn't say anything about future plans, but there are future conferences are related to software developers at. that that we're making plans for to be able to go and kind of provide, you know, live coverage, not, you know, streaming every session or, or what whatever you might do at a conference, but kind of be what ultimately we wanted is I wanted to be the a place, a site, a TV channel, if you will, that software developers would tune in and just leave it on in the background while they were working or doing something else and, mm-hmm. you know, know that they could jump into the chat room and if not interact with us directly or whoever's doing the show, then they could talk to each other that we could build a fan base and people that know each other. And we're starting to see that we're starting to get fans who are regulars who appear that we know they're there. We miss them when they're not. And uh, it's, it's been pretty cool so far. So are a lot of the viewers within Intel itself or is it more? Most of the, most of the viewers come from outside. Mm -hmm. Um, We do have the, you know, it's weighted pretty, I, I won't say heavily, but there are lots of people from inside who watch inside mm-hmm. Intel people in our group who are just kind of tuning in and watching what we do um, and participating there to answer questions. But um, our audience and our focus is almost entirely outside of Intel. We it's not an internal thing. Mm-hmm. And and that's for the entire community site. Intel Software Network is, is externally focused. Um, you know, the mission of the group is to provide um, what they call scale enabling. So mm-hmm. if you're a big software company like you know, say Adobe or something like that. You've got dedicated people who work with you to make your products work well, to help you solve problems with parallelism and threading and and anything else you might need. But if you're an independent developer, if you're a student or if you're a small shop, um, you know, you you aren't going to have, you know, an account representative um, from a big company like Intel. So our community is built to provide access to the same engineers and smart people that Intel hires and Intel has to, the you know to anyone who wants it basically through this community mechanism through the forums and the blogs and videos and tv and all the other stuff we do so let's take a step over behind we've got the in the front end people can go and watch what's it take what run me through an episode you've said you've got three shows what are the three shows the three shows that we do uh we do live episodes um one of them is every week the other two are every other week. So mm-hmm. on a full show day, which this next every Tuesday we do our shows live mm-hmm. at eight o'clock in the morning, there's parallel programming talk mm-hmm. at 10 o'clock. There's teach parallel, which mm-hmm. is focusing on teaching parallelism in the academic curriculums and professors and computer yeah. science people. And then we have a show called visualize this, which is by our games community manager on graphics and games development and visual computing artist, artist and animation type topics. So walk walk them through what it takes because what it takes as, to put on an dis- episode. As we discussed earlier, there you know there are some hard and fast things that happen no matter what you're trying to produce, and you guys got to look at it from 
it's it's, it's fascinating it's fascinating to, to be on this side of the cameras for once because we're yeah. watching and there's you know technical the last minute rush i've always said that you know the last 15 minutes before we go live is just it's just crazy no matter how many times you've done it mm -hmm. and and i've also been heard to say that live tv is going to be the death of me but uh it's it's nice to be on the other end of it it's nice not to have the technical chaos be my problem for mm -hmm. once um jerry i've been talking the whole time do you want to oh, introduce yourself and, yeah. talk it, about talk about what it goes through jerry's to, not a very quiet person until the camera turns on <laughs> i know well, it's strange that way i have a bad problem that when a camera goes on swear words fall out of my head so oh, I, we'll wait till after hours <laughs> yeah. to talk to you then uh from, from the from a technical standpoint what we watched Doc Normal do when we got here is exactly what I go through every time. Mm -hmm. We're just constantly setting things up and tweaking. And uh, like I said, I'm an idiot when the cameras are on. My my brain just went. Whoop. <laughs> That's fine. We we have a we have some challenges. This all started as an experiment, mm -hmm. and we try lots of things, and they don't all pan out. But this one has panned out um, pretty well so far. But we're basically shooting these episodes in our cubes, in our cube areas. <laughs> Which is slightly disruptive because the operation has grown to the point where we have three cameras and a TriCaster to switch between them. That and sounds very familiar. Bunch three of cameras network. And yeah, it's very similar <laughs> to the setup you have here. Imagine having to set this up and tear it down every week mm -hmm. in and out of boxes, mm -hmm. which is what we have to do. Um, and it's really disruptive to our cube neighbors. Luckily, there are people in our group and they're understanding and they know that Tuesday is just going to be chaos. And, and we're going to be doing just shows. Go work in a yes. conference room or my something. boss sits across the uh, across the aisle from me, and he knows that he's not going to have use of his desk on Tuesdays because his that's desk is the, the set. set. <laughs> and we use his phone and his chair and and everything else. So um, it's the setup is really similar. We have you know we have the audio set up with a mixer, and we have a bunch of network equipment, and we have the three cameras, and we have lights and and stands, and and a lot of the time our guests are remote. Mm -hmm. um, all three of the shows are sort of talk show style, kind of like we're doing here, um, you know, with hosts and guests and kind of topic oriented. Um, but a lot of the times the, the the people that come on the show are, you know, the head of the CS department at some university or, you know, the CEO of a game company or something. And so they're they're calling in and we do remote video for them. We get Skype, get them on a webcam mm -hmm. when we can. Um and, and bring them in. Do you in, ever so. like use a little pedestal of Crocs to set them on? Um, I can't say that my Crocs have ever made Just an curious. appearance, Just but curious. we've, we've done some pretty crazy <laughs> things. Like um, it's, it's interesting. And, and I guess the people watching might appreciate um, look for the little, there are some, some Easter eggs in, in our shows and mm -hmm. our broadcast that we do um, some recurring things like a uh, little foam channel nine guys you'll find everywhere. Uh, kind of little homage to, to channel nine and, and MSDN and, and we've taken a lot of influence from the video stuff that they do. And we kind of feel a kinship with, uh, with, with the guys up there. So you'll see little channel nine guys. You'll see little funny things snuck in there. I mean, we, we, we have fun with it. I love my job. I have the best job at Intel. Mm -hmm. No question. Uh, I beg to differ, sir. I have the best job at Intel. Well, the two of us will argue I get the about toys. it. But between the two of us with the toys we get to play with, with the fun we get to have, it's it's great. So it's not just, you know, hey, look, Intel is talking about software with the developers and, you know, you're going to hear, you know, code come out of someone's mouth for 15 minutes. It's really, especially if you're a software developer, it's really interesting stuff. It's really important. We try to make it fun as much as we can. Um, I mentioned the new shows that we're going to try to bring on the air. We have no end of ideas of things that we want to produce, but right now we're kind of constrained by um, it, we're working really hard to get us get ourselves a studio in a permanent space. Mm -hmm. The running joke with us now, whenever we do a show, because Jerry and I come in, the fir sh first show goes out at eight o'clock on Tuesdays. Jerry and I are usually there no later than six thirty every Tuesday, yeah. just to get everything set up, and we have to put it all away at the end of the day when we're done. And so the running joke is, you know, people will walk by and say, "You guys really should have a studio for this," and I just. Mm -hmm have to restrain the urge to throw something at their head mm -hmm. when they say that, but it's become a joke now. And so it's a lot easier to not be violent when, when you know, they're just people make observations, good, about good natured audience. humor. Yes, exactly. And we have fun stuff happen. Like since we do shoot in the cubes, um, this happened just a couple of weeks ago. One of the people who live, he's in our group, he's a developer and, and he sits down the, the row. Um, we were live, we were shooting, we had guests in the, you know, the cameras were live and we were broadcasting and, and going out and, and he just walked by and went and walked to his desk, just walked right in front of all three cameras. It was pretty funny. All three. How do you walk in front of all three cameras? 
Well, the way the way we have them set up, it's basically we're shooting across the aisle. So oh, okay. imagine imagine a, it's 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 in the new um, Intel's testing this kind of remodeled cube area. So they're mm-hmm. not um, you know the standard walled cubes. It's kind of an open bullpen area okay. where there's four of them, and we just take it over completely. And he just walked right through the middle of it. <laughs> it, was, it was fun. It was great. We run um, we run a behind the scenes camera mm-hmm. before and after we go live. Mm. So I, I think that there's a show that could benefit from the behind the scenes <laughs> camera. We do it without audio for obvious reasons, mm-hmm. but, um, but it's fun. You know, people can kind of see us setting up and, and uh, tearing things down and we kind of get a peek into the cockpit of how it works. But the real reason we do it is because funny stuff happens. Yeah. Um, what have you I, dropped something or not? Well, I tripped on the tripod and then I was joking about tripping on the tripod and I went to take out my Leatherman, which was on upside down. And the Leatherman fell out of my pocket, and then I tripped picking that up. It was, it was a, just comedy a comedy of errors. errors. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was creepy. That was. Yeah. Get out of my head. Do you guys spend a little too much time together, maybe? Yeah, Do you think? Uh, yeah. Dr. Normal, this is really your, your field here. You you actually have, like, other video production podcasting geeks here on the couch. Don't you have anything to ask them? Oh, really? You should be running... You should be running the boards. I know how to. I know how to run it. I do actually know how to run this stuff. Well, I know I, it's. Yeah, I, th- I think yeah. that's a good discussion for uh, after hours. Actually, <laughs> as I turn down my audio levels <laughs> and uh, do other things, but yeah, I mean, it's. Um, why don't you talk about the uh, back end? Like um, you have, you're using live stream as your streaming okay. service, and yep. I was just showing your promo mm-hmm. up on. Oh, we all looked. Oh, I so got a, everyone looks for uh, the monitor. I promised I'd give a shout out to the Screaming Inside Films guys that shot those promos for us. They were, oh, nice. they were adamant that I mentioned them. At yes, least and once we tonight. we would definitely do it even if they had. They they right. did an awesome job. We worked with with Screaming Inside to do some uh, some promos for ISN TV and. Uh, and for just Intel Software Network in general. And so you'll see those um, interspliced. If you go and watch the stream, you'll see a show episode and then, um, you know, like a bumper and a promo, kind of like a real TV show. We mm-hmm. kind of intersplice them and we change it up all the time. So, and there's the on demand area. So you mentioned we do use live stream, um, one of the, the online streaming providers, and that gives us a player where there's an on demand button you can click and um, go and watch past episodes. You can go watch all of our promos and stuff. We have a visitor. Hi. <laughs> Because live shows are always fun. <laughs> Yay. So was there a specific reason that you went with live stream? Did, no, did you guys go with live stream or Ustream? With, we went with live stream. Okay. And, and, you know, I, I have to be careful here to not imply any, you know, official, I'm not speaking for Intel. We're experimenting and using tools and, and we picked, um, Rachel, Rachel's got her. It's good. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> it's good. Um, my wife, Rachel's here behind the scenes and. She just went out well, with our little visitor. Yeah, we'll see her a little bit in after hours. <laughs> yes. We'll get her on. Um, so we, we picked them because, I mean, the, the package is nice to put everything together with the interactive chat, with the archived episodes and on demand. Um, and it was what the cool kids were using. I mean, you guys were, it was Mogulus at the time. But, yeah. you know, we, we looked at what people were using and, you know, Ustream is popular and Mogulus is popular. And we just decided, honestly, we started experimenting with them and it worked. And so... That's what we went with. There's so many uh, services now. And when you syndicate, you can do like Tube Mogul and things like yeah, that as well. Yeah, we have um, – so it's actually kind of the getting into the, the back end <laughs> setup and everything. So when we stream live, um, we are actually using WiMAX connections mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. Clear um, for the reason that we, we had all this, you know, the TriCaster and the network equipment and, and the bandwidth need to be able to stream out. Um, we didn't want to put that on the Intel network for security reasons, for not attaching, you know, non approved mm-hmm. devices to the network, as well as, you know, sucking up their bandwidth and, and having guaranteed bandwidth, which we've had trouble with. And, and these video streaming services don't often work very well behind a proxy behind a firewall, mm-hmm. um, which is one thing that live stream did, uh, work for us. Uh, but we decided, you know, we need to have an outside internet connection and since we're doing this in our cubes, we couldn't very well order, you know, an outside DSL line or something like we could if we had a lab or a studio. Um, so we're using we're using WiMAX. And so when the show goes out every week from Oregon, um, when we're not out on location at an event um, from Portland, it's going out over WiMAX. And we we stream out over that and we just avoid the Intel network completely, which is nice from a security perspective. It's not causing any problems with their bandwidth usage and mm-hmm. and everything. Um and it's been pretty smooth so far. We've we've had some technical bumps, but 
How do you, those are fun. How do you right? handle the shows? Yes, the technical bumps, oh, it's yeah. always a learning experience. I just keep telling myself that, and one day I'll believe it. It's educational. Someday you're going to know everything. Maybe. How do you handle... So when you guys go live on location, are you still sticking to that same schedule, or are you producing extra content? Usually both. Mm -hmm. um, we've only really done it once so far, and we're looking... We're in the throes of planning a couple of conferences that are coming up and looking at what we're going to be able to do. We try to maintain our regular show schedules so that we're not, you know, so that the show is regular and people who know that they want to tune in at two 30 on every other Tuesday to see visualize this, the our show from the games development community, mm -hmm. they'll be able to see it. Um, but we also have the opportunity to produce a lot more than that. We don't want to go and just do a regular show from a different location. If we're going to be at a conference for a week, and ship all our equipment and us and, and everything. We want to do a lot of extra stuff. So yeah. at SIGGRAPH, we we did lots of interviews with um, some of the other companies who were there working with Intel who had things to show off. We had a, a lineup of those um, scheduled. And there's a lot of cool possibilities in the future for for extra content that, um, that I can't specifically Secret. tell you about. But it's going to be cool. So, so stay tuned. I had to sneak, sneak stay tuned in there. That's stay the, tuned. The TV. I'm a, oh, I'm a, people ask me what I do for Intel. And prior to this, it was actually really hard to describe. Well, I'm, I'm the pet geek of the group that lives in the future and plays with internet technologies to see what we should use in our community. And they just kind of look at me like you get paid to do that. And they don't really understand. Um, cause there's no formal job title that, that can really encompass that. But now I can just tell them I'm, I'm a big shot TV producer and, <laughs> and it's just and it much simpler. Everyone. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah, he does TV. Uh, do you find that people are now, now see, this is the thing that I always find funny. Strains of live is available anytime you want it on the internet, mm -hmm. which same thing with your shows. Yes. But for some reason, when we then, uh, it runs on cable access now too. Mm -hmm. People are so much more excited by that. Congratulations, by the way. That was that was pretty cool. It is cool, but at the same time, you have to watch that on their schedule, and on the internet, you can watch it whenever you want to. Yeah. And so, to me, that's kind of I've always found it's it. It's called podcasting. Check it out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so RSS, I always find it okay. very interesting because people's reaction are always congratulations. That's very cool. You know what? It is very cool, and thank you. But I always just thought it was really funny because I would always choose to watch something when I want to watch it. I think I think there's I mean, if you think about it and if you ha if you get podcasting, you get why it's mm -hmm. great. You get the fact that you can watch it when and where you want. I mean, with the live show, that's one thing, because then you can interact. With exactly. People. And that's that's the other thing but when you're doing the, the reason we do live. The reason we don't just tape our shows and put them out whenever is because we want to get that live interactive uh, feature. Uh, mm -hmm. That that consequence that that thing that you get by doing it on a specific schedule, mm -hmm. um, it's you know it's a double edged sword. It, it it also keeps you honest time wise though. You get it done. Yeah. <laughs> Ish. Sometimes <laughs> we actually have um because we also integrate our shows. A couple of our shows also stream simultaneously on on Blog Talk Radio. You can listen mm -hmm. to the stream. Um, our first show. That's how it started. And so. So it was just audio. We're actually it, it was just audio when it started. Parallel programming talk. And uh, since we still work with them and since the, the way Blog Talk Radio works is you schedule a show to start at a specific time and then it, it starts at that time, whether you're ready or not. Mm -hmm. That's and your so time. And it ends at that. Yeah. It's over when it's over. As well. Yeah, it's yeah. over when it's over. And that, that hasn't been uh, as much of a problem. But sometimes it's um, sometimes it is, is tough to, to have that kind of to not have any wiggle room at all. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it does keep us honest. It does make sure that, you know, we're going to go live when that goes live because it's going to start whether we want it to or not. I don't know if I would have designed it that way from the beginning or if I had my druthers, if I would change it, if I could, but, uh, that's, that's the way television works. That's it the way radio personally. works. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the, the internet is diplomatic a much, the internet is a much more ish place yes. than television yes. is. And, 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 for and our, the blog talk radio, I think the same thing. They much like radio. You turn on the radio, you expect to hear the show that's on when it's on. So yeah, yeah, that's why I like the internet. It does provide Gosh. us some interesting problems in that since we're tied to blog talk, we get to listen to the annoying English lady that does the chat at the beginning. The, the mm -hmm. countdown. And it's like uh, your show will start in five seconds. I tend mm -hmm. to have to fight with that because I have my overlays, my musical overlays that come on at the beginning of the show and I mm -hmm, have yeah. to time it exactly to them. Mm -hmm. So that's been kind of bumpy a lot. Yeah. 
every show. We're, we're trying to make it better. Every week we try to make it simpler and better. Yeah. The first time I was ever on a podcast, I was on a podcast that was on Blog Talk Radio. It was a friend's podcast, and I came on, get a different guest co-host every week. And I went on that, and it was interesting. You can you can do some really cool stuff with Blog Talk Radio with mm-hmm. their... With well, their cinch service. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's very, very simple. Um, you know, it's phone based. You don't have to worry about how am I going to record both ends of this Skype conversation, mm-hmm. which I've been down that rabbit hole. Um, you want to know how I handle that? How? I make him do you it. You point at him. <laughs> and so he can sympathize when I say. I say, hey, Dr. Normal, I need everyone. That's kind of yes. how I make yeah. it work, too. I'm like, oh, the Skype thing. That's Josh, because yeah. I'm the camera mm-hmm. TriCaster and, and we actually we actually do a little bit of that, but it it would be nice to have just a magic thing where everyone just calls and it works and 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 for some things like one of like uh, Marshall Kirkpatrick and Dave Weiner do the the Bad Hair Day podcast and mm-hmm. they use Blog Talk Radio for that at least they did in the beginning I'm a few episodes behind I think they're still using it but uh, it's it's great it lets them just get on the phone and and record a podcast and, it takes care of all of the technical yeah, details for exactly you. you don't have to worry about playing with an audio mixer and getting, you know, mix minus with Skype and multiple connections and balancing levels and things. And and my problem is I like to do that. Mm -hmm. I like to play with that and play with the levels. I mean, I started podcasting in 2004 and just, it just ate it up as a hobby. I loved it because it was fun. It was, you know, great. Oh, a new mixer. I can do this now. And, you know, I can have a remote person Skype in and, and uh, it's, it's, it's addicting. How did that start? I know you did some unboxing stuff. I saw some of your, podcasts back in the day i mean not back in 2004 but previous to you ever coming on the show initially before uh ignite what got you started with that just the same sense of adventure and internet curiosity it was exploring it was exploring um it was very uh, i i can tell you exactly when it was i had started blogging um a year or so before and was you know just exploring different services i was on blogger.com at the time and Mm -hmm. Uh, there was That's this ser- there was this service that came out called Audio Blogger, mm-hmm. and I ca- I think it was sort of kind of affiliated, but I I don't it went away, so I don't remember what it was. But it lets you essentially do um, kind of what Blog Talk Radio would let you do. It lets you call a number and record a phone call, mm-hmm. and then it would publish that as an MP3 file in a blog post on your blog, and it would handle you know at the same time I started listening to podcasts and I was listening to um, you know to Adam Curry and Dave Weiner doing. Um, you know, doing their shows and kind of the the genesis of when podcasting really took off. Um, I discovered IT conversations and all the stuff Doug K was doing over there Mm -hmm. and just, you know, started subscribing to everything I could and just quickly discovered how fast you can end up with more things than you can listen to. Um, But audio blogger was where I first in my very first audio podcast um, was in November, 2004. And I remember just calling up audio blogger and saying, talking for a minute or two about, Hey, just trying this out and experimenting and seeing how it works. And, um, and it went from there. So what happened from there is I realized this is really easy and this is really cool to have a show where you're not constrained by the typical radio and TV things. People can listen when they want. You can make it as long as you want. You Mm -hmm. don't have to make it short. You can go as geeky as you want and kind of, you know, years later, people would come to call it narrow casting and, you know, the niche audience thing you can get, you know, let a thousand flowers bloom and let, you know, let there be a podcast for every topic. Um, this was before iTunes even supported podcasting and there mm-hmm. was no iTunes podcast directory. Um, but I started, um, there was a friend of mine at work, Brian Jarvis, um, a good friend of mine who every week, more or less before podcasting or anything came along, we would get together and just talk about whatever the latest gadget each of us had Mm -hmm. the latest PDA, the latest pocket PC or software tool or whatever. We just, we just get together and nerd out about this stuff. And I thought, why don't we record that and just do it as a show every week? And so it started where, you know, we worked in the same group at Intel. And so we would just on our lunch hour, go find a conference room and sit down with different audio setup every week, mics and stuff recording into a computer. And, Mm -hmm. and that's where it started snowballing. And I started buying equipment and, Rachel is looking at me. She's looking at me. It's like, I I remember those days way too well. (laughs) Every week or so a box would show up from musician's friend or Amazon and have something else in it. But, uh, Mm -hmm. but we started and, and I can't remember how long it ran. It was almost two years. I think we called the show tiny podcast and uh, had it up and running. um, Basically just, you know, post on my blog and we do a half hour show every week. And Mm -hmm. um, it developed a, it developed a following. It developed fans, people who read my blog and I, Got to know them through the comments, and most of them were people I had met at conferences or things, but um, people missed it when it went away. 
and it went away because Brian moved to a different uh, different building at Intel, and I just didn't see him as much anymore, and so it was harder to get together. And we tried to do the remote phone thing, and it just got harder and harder, and it kind of fell yeah. apart. Long distance, but podcasting people, relationships. Uh, exactly, it's it's <laughs> tough. Um, and it's I still have a, I wish I had a, a, could keep in touch with him better because we've just this week we've been trying to get together, and it's like. We, you know, we need to nerd out. And now it's like we do it every three months and it's just not enough when it used to be every week. But uh, it's um, it's something it was really fun and it gave me a lot of it. it I experiment with stuff to learn to learn it inside and out to really mm-hmm. kind of know what the deal is so that later on there, you know, I can if there's something that I can apply that knowledge to, then then I have it. I mean, that's yeah. I just I live for that kind of stuff. I love it. I compulsively do it whether I try or not. Um. So that's how I got into podcasting and audio stuff. And a lot of it actually still applies to the video stuff that we do. Um, I make sure that our videos are available for download, that there's an RSS feed so people can subscribe. And if they want to get it automatically, um, that's all on the site. You can subscribe. The The way we, we record the videos, we put up a high quality version. And we actually put it on Blip TV mm-hmm. um, for, a couple of, for a couple of reasons. Yeah, same thing over um, there. They're a fantastic service and I became yeah. a, I've become a big fan of them. The same way I kind of got into audio blogger and podcasting, um, just experimenting and looking at all the features that they offer. So we put the put it up there, and then we sideload the episode into live stream um, through the through the RSS feed. It's just automatic, and it goes in, and um, it's it's something that uh, people can go and download it. They can take the embed code and put it in their blog posts mm-hmm. um, every week when Aaron does a show or any of our other show hosts. They'll put up a blog post on Intel Software Network with the player of that episode and a download link and everything. And, you know, blip gives us all the metrics. It generates the feed for us. And uh, so we basically kind of cobbled together some really cool services that I've been playing with for a while. And, and we've made this really cool thing out of it. So it's something that, uh, you know, if you, if you started out from scratch with no knowledge and no experience, it would take a lot of time and probably a lot of money and effort to build something. But with the tools that are out there, um, you can, you know, plug Lego pieces together yeah. and, and make some really cool stuff happening with make some really cool stuff happen with, with pretty minimal effort. I think we're going to roll the rest of this conversation over into after hours. Okay. Um, but thank you guys both for joining us. Jerry will talk more during after hours because I'm going to bring down my so. timbers. I hope so because I just talked an awful lot more <laughs> than I meant to. I... Um, please join us next week. We're going to be joined by media chick and Megan Kate. They're going to talk about the miracle in July. Have a good night. Great. Thanks for watching everyone. <laughs>